A cliffhanger ending is one that exactly reproduces the end of the Sylvester Stallone movie Cliffhanger by having John Lithgow fall off a cliff. Wait, no, I'm just hearing it's, it's not that at all. It's actually an unresolved ending that hopes to lure people back by promising that you'll find out what happens next. Sometimes, however, that promise is a big fat lie and you never find out what happens next because there was no sequel, the sequel got cancelled, or the sequel just went ahead and ignored the ending of the last game. Just remember all these times video games did precisely that and watch out ahead for seriously unresolved plot points as well as spoilers for the following. Nice car. It's a friend's. Would you like to drive? I feel much safer with a man behind the wheel. James Bond 007 Bloodstone from 2010 had all the ingredients you needed for a bona fide Bond adventure. Fast cars, international travel, M, glamorous Bond girl Joss Stone, a bioweapons plot, Daniel Craig's face, Daniel Craig's ears, more fast cars, it's got the lot. The game takes place a few years after the events of actual Bond film Quantum of Solace, but tells an original story in which a Russian oligarch has been manufacturing biological weapons and is the bad guy. Or is he? I mean, yes, he very much is, but he's not the only bad guy or the most important bad guy, as we discover right at the very end of the game when Bond is betrayed by the glamorous Bond girl because of course he is. I appreciate your concern, but I don't think MI6 is going to be a problem anymore. After a Monaco set car chase in which he grinds the rear quarter panels all off of Joss Stone's Koenigsegg CCXR, which Mike informs me is a kind of... car... Bond gets the British singer-songwriter behind Right To Be Wrong and Super Duper Love at gunpoint and extracts the truth, which is that all along she has been working for a previously unknown and powerful mystery bad guy. Who? Who is it? It won't make a difference. I want a name. You don't understand. He's everywhere. He's bigger than you, bigger than MI6, bigger than everything. This mystery bad guy is more bad and more mystery than anyone Bond has ever faced. And here's his unmanned drone. There is no escape. Nicole, down, get down! The problem with a plot twist that happens a few seconds before the end of the game is that it burdens the follow-up game with making good on that narrative promise. But the credits do promise that James Bond will return, so I guess meet back here in a couple of years, guys, and then we'll learn the secret of the big bad guy who's bigger than James Bond, MI6 and everything. No? Or not? I mean, the studio behind the game, Bizarre Creations, was shut down the following year and it's been all quiet on the Bloodstone front ever since, so sorry about it, Bond. Watch out. The gap in the door. It's a separate reality. The only me is me. Are you sure the only you is you? PT is less of a video game and more a playable visualization of my worst fears, which include, but are not limited to, swarms of insects, bizarre murders, terrifying ghost women, and refrigerators. <laughs> ah! So cold. Initially shrouded in mystery, PT eventually revealed itself to be a playable teaser for the upcoming Silent Hills, a new game in the Silent Hill horror franchise directed by Hideo Kojima, with input from famed movie director Guillermo del Toro, Walking Dead actor Norman Reedus, and horror manga legend Junji Ito. If they really wanted to complete the set of People Who've Given Me Nightmares, they would have announced that also on the development team were my driving test examiner and the melting Nazi from Raiders of the Lost Ark. But you can't have everything. PT did an excellent job of establishing the cheery themes and symbols that Silent Hills would concern itself with, such as guilt, domestic abuse, and is chatty fetuses a theme? That, anyway. <laughs> It also created an air of mystery around Silent Hills, with its ending, which began with an unknown voice talking about their murder at the hands of their father, then talking about coming back and bringing their toys with them. But guess what? I will be coming back, and I'm bringing my new toys with me. And closed with a memorable last cutscene which showed Redus, presumably the character we had just been playing as in the teaser, walking through a deserted town. Intriguing, right? Well, good luck finding out what any of that all means, because thanks to a falling out between Kojima and Konami, the entire Silent Hills project is deader than us after a run-in with Lisa. <laughs> A 
At least Kojima's next, also intriguing and also mysterious project, Death Stranding, is in the works. I'm sure that will eventually reveal why Norman Reedus is now naked on a beach with a baby, and also why Mads Mikkelsen's eyes are so weird. And also, we're never gonna find out, are we? Adams is about to breach our defenses with a trust strike force! How did he find us? I do not know, nor do I care. The... wait. 2011 Wii first-person shooter Conduit 2 had a storyline that contained more conspiracy theories than Fox Mulder's secret diary. But even in a game that features references to ancient astronauts, reptilian rulers of Earth, the Tunguska incident, the disappearance of Colonel Percy Fawcett, the Droper Stones, and the Deluge myth, nothing can prepare you for the sheer unhinged brilliance of the game's cliffhanger ending. The final battle sees you going up against both the human and alien forms of antagonist John Adams in a dramatic firefight in a lost city in the centre of a hollow planet Earth. Makes a change from it being flat, I guess. Polish off the boss in both his forms and you're treated to a surprise cliffhanger setup for a sequel that sadly, we're never going to see. Abraham Lincoln and George Washington step out of a portal wearing sci-fi armour, the main character does a massive double take, and then the credits roll. You're here to help. But I have so many questions. How are they still alive? Where did they get those nifty destroyer armor suits from? Just how bad does George Washington's wig smell after 250 years? But the biggest question, why didn't more of you buy Conduit 2 so we could find out what happens next? Did you buy it? No, it was a dreadful game. Why do you wear that scarf? It's lucky. I didn't think you believed in that sort of thing. I don't, but maybe it believes in me. 2008 was a year of great accomplishments. It gave us the Beijing Olympics, Kung Fu Panda, and a Prince of Persia reboot in which the prince is not actually a prince, but is, in fact, Nolan North. Patience is overrated. And you've never heard that good things are worth waiting for? Good things are good things. Why wait? Oh, and the Large Hadron Collider. This new game reimagined Prince of Persia as an action platforming fable in which a ripped adventurer meets a mystical princess. and then helps her cleanse the kingdom of inky splodges of evil with her magical powers of light. He isn't a prince, but his nickname is Prince, because if it's good enough for the man who sang Raspberry Beret, it's good enough for him. We gradually learn that everything went inky and evil because Princess Elika had died before the game began and her royal dad had cut a deal with the god of darkness Araman to bring her back to life. What's that all saying about doing a deal with the god of darkness? Oh yeah, don't. Father? Lost. Gone from us. I'm here. Anywho, in the finale of the game, Elika has to sacrifice her magical self to save her kingdom and seal Araman, the ancient god of darkness, inside the White Tree of Gondor. We did it! Elika, we did it! Then, because learning from history instead of repeating its mistakes is for chumps without pectoral definition like this, the prince resurrects Elika for a second time with the same shady deal with the same god of darkness. On finding herself brought back from the dead again, Elika revives with all the gratitude of me being woken up by the postman on my day off. Why? And there the game ends with Elika being rescued by Prince from the maelstrom of corruption caused by Prince and evil god Araman on the loose once more. What is one grain of sand? What is one grain of sand? So in this cliffhanger ending, the dark forces of corruption have a new stranglehold on the kingdom with a view to engulfing the world and it looks like nothing can stop them. Except for you, doing the entire game all over again. The only thing after this downer ending was a DLC epilogue in which Elika and our hero escape the forces of darkness some more in an underground palace, while she has a go at him for, you know, dooming everyone. What was I supposed to do? Leave you there dead? After which she runs off in search of someone who won't make a deal with the god of darkness and doom everyone. Elika, we need to stick together. Elika! 
We'll never really know what happened to Elika and Prince after that because that game came out nearly 10 years ago and there's no sign of a sequel. And that's not to mention how in 2010 Prince of Persia The Forgotten Sands came out and totally ignored the plot of this previous game. This is my destiny. To save this kingdom. Reboot? What reboot? There was never a reboot. You're crazy, Prince of Persia fans. Anyone here can use a knife or a gun. What you're gonna learn is how to use your head. Let's move! When you get that under your belt, then you're free to leave. As anyone who's played Metal Gear Solid 5 will tell you, it's about... <laughs> Metal Gear Solid 5 is about one man's quest to compile the greatest ever 80s mixtape. There's a disease that targets people who speak certain languages. If you speak English, that's bad because they can kill you if you speak... No, that can't be right. And there are also zombies caused by a parasite. So there's a guy, he's got a skull instead of a face. And funny names, yes, like Rabid Otter. I had a, a guy called Rabid Otter, I believe. The snake's got his, like, private military on an oil rig or something. There are these parasites and you can teleport. There's a, you know, walking bipedal nuke, I assume, because there, there always is. Uh, and there's a lady who's powered by sun tanning, I think. Well, whatever it was about, what it definitely wasn't about was ending in a satisfactory way, thanks to the aforementioned falling out between Kojima and Konami. One of the biggest plot points revolves around Metal Gear Sahelanthropus, a bipedal mech created by Huey Emmerich and one of the greatest threats to peace the world has ever known. So that's the Metal Gear he built for the Soviets. It's impossible! It can't be active! Naturally, you want to make sure something like that isn't used for evil, so once Snake defeats it in the mission Sahelanthropus, he and the Diamond Dogs destroy it completely so it can never fall into the wrong hands. Oh no, wait, they leave it lying around on one of their oil platforms and then a couple of children steal it. Goodbye, father. I don't need you anymore. Kids, eh? This isn't the last you've seen of us, they seem to say as they fly off towards the horizon, which is ironic because that's absolutely the last you see of them in any of the rest of Metal Gear Solid 5's 50 missions. Sure, Eli shows up later in the series as everyone's favourite whiny shirtless guy, Liquid Snake. I got all the recessive genes. So likeable, but as far as what he got up to with Psycho Mantis, Sahelanthropus, and a helicopter full of child soldiers, Metal Gear Solid 5 leaves us none the wiser. Turns out that had Kojima been left alone forever with infinite money, like he asked, we would have found out. You see, on the Metal Gear Solid 5 Collector's Edition bonus disc, there are voice tracks, concept art, and partially completed cutscenes for a Mission 51, which shows Venom Snake travelling to Eli's Lord of the Flies style island to take down him and Sahelanthropus. You're not a kid anymore. You can call your own shots. But at this rate, you'll be dead before you have a chance. I'm free to die however I wish. Yes. Free. All of this would have nicely tied up Eli and Snake's story instead of leaving us with a massive cliffhanger, no resolution, and a weird craving to beat up Billy Idol. Y'all still with me? If you're not familiar with the Bad Company spin-off series, it's basically Battlefield, only your squad are a bunch of comedy misfits instead of the usual deadly serious career soldiers. Oh wait, 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 what, why is the plane glowing? Oh, no, 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 no! Get down! Battlefield Bad Company 2 saw the crew saving the world from a secret scalar weapon held by a rogue Russian army colonel, which is designed to take out the US power grid because presumably he thinks that America is only three days without reality television away from a full-blown revolution. Against all the odds, Bad Company managed to thwart Colonel Kirilenko's dastardly plan by first shooting the superweapon... ...and then shooting Kirilenko. Anyone got any other problems that need shooting? Uh, I mean, solving? 
Conveniently, the squad land in friendly Texas and start planning their celebratory trip to what I can only assume is an entirely family-friendly dance review. Well, now we need to party, and I know an establishment you're gonna love. Unfortunately, before they can phone to make a reservation, the actual non-shambolic army turn up with a surprise revelation. But why, sir? The Russians. They're invading. Yes, the Russians are invading US soil in a historic act of aggression and a final ignition of the long-dormant Cold War. That sounds like it would be exciting to play, doesn't it? A full-scale invasion of America, perhaps with you valiantly defending the White House at the end? Well, you can't. What you can do instead is patiently wait for Bad Company 3 to never come out. Or just play Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, which has the exact same US invasion plot, but actually lets you play it. Just saying. You cannot free her! Jackie! Based on a popular comic book, The Darkness 2 continues the adventures of Jackie Estacado, the world's only goth mafia boss. Darkness it didn't just make Jackie stronger, it, it, it made him a god. But only when the lights were out. Jackie is host to a power known as The Darkness, which gives him a host of demonic powers that he can use only in the dark. Mostly, these involve heart-eating tentacles, which, as you can imagine, are quite a boon for the head of a crime family. Saves you a fortune in heart disposal bills. Anyway, by the end of The Darkness 2, Jackie finds himself in hell, in front of his girlfriend Jenny, who died in the first game. Jackie manages to free her from her imprisonment, but as soon as he does so, she is taken over by a being known as the Angelus, a counterpart to The Darkness that resides in Jackie. We are the Angelus. Rising out of hell, the Angelus then informs Jackie he is now trapped in hell forever, and she's off to do, well, something, but judging by that outfit and those horns, it probably isn't good. You have become too powerful a host, caused too much suffering. You and it are now where you belong. Man, what a great setup for The Darkness 3, you're probably thinking. We'll have to fight our way out of hell, find out what the Angelus has been up to, and then take her down in an epic confrontation fraught with emotional moments as Jenny tries to break free from her control. You're probably also thinking, hang on, there isn't a Darkness 3, and you're absolutely right, because this is the last we've seen of the series since 2012, and it's not looking like that is going to change anytime in the near future. Wow! Sucks to be you, Jackie, stuck in hell forever with that hair where are you gonna get conditioner down there man may 10th 2010 i'm about to step through a gate into another time or maybe it's another world i'm being sent in with other members of trat our mission to rescue 1300 survivors and collect data on the third energy project what if resident evil but dinosaurs, a heroic game designer at Capcom once asked, and the result was Dino Crisis, a great series that inexplicably never got 47 movie adaptations by Paul W.S. Anderson. The activator for the gate is broken too. We can't get back to our own time. In the second Dino Crisis game, heroes Regina and Dylan end up trapped in the past, which is a hassle for them, partly because there's nowhere for either of them to get the hair dye they like, and partly because it's absolutely crawling with deadly, deadly dinosaurs. By the end of the game, Regina and Dylan have managed to activate the time gate they need to return to their own time, but wouldn't you know it, Dylan's daughter Paula has been trapped by some falling equipment and is unable to move. Refusing to leave his daughter, Dylan tells Regina to travel through the gate alone and find a way to return to save both him and Paula, using the data they collected during the game. When you get back to our original time, use the data to learn about third energy, then build a perfect gate and come pick us up for the last time. Pretty great setup for a sequel right there, so imagine our confusion on loading up Dino Crisis 3 to discover that it's set on a spaceship in the year 2548 and Regina and Dylan are literally never mentioned. Even a mention in passing would have been fine, just so we know they're okay. Like, oh man, you just saved me from that space dinosaur, the way that Regina saved Dylan in that folktale that's been passed down to us here in the future. Oh thanks man, you really just Regina'd me. I mean, you've got writers Capcom not doing all the work for you. Still, we can always hope. Maybe they can follow Resident Evil 7's lead and do a sequel that both resolves the story of Dino Crisis 2 and puts you in a farmhouse in Louisiana with an angry velociraptor. Now that I'd play. Alright everyone, thanks for watching this video about cliffhanger endings that will never be resolved. You can watch another video from us up here, or something from Outside Extra down here, or if you want to subscribe, you can click on the subscribe orb right here. Oh no! I'm falling off my- ah! Oh, I'm so hurt.
Will I come back in the next video? Who knows? You'll have to click on it to find out. Wolves! Where do they come from? Oh, how will I escape from this perilous situation?